At square one, you formed a theory, a collection of ideas. At square two, you did a literature review to summarize what has already been done. At square three, you selected your variables, handedness and intelligence. In square four, you use your theory to clearly define your model. In research, any variable can be used to predict another, so it's important to use your theory to determine the direction of your hypothesis. You could predict that intelligence causes handedness, or you could predict that handedness causes intelligence. To decide, think back to your theory and lit review. When you were reading about handedness, you probably read that it was tied to genetics. People don't choose to be left-handed, they are born that way. Your reading probably also included genetic link to intelligence. People also don't choose to be smart or dumb, they are born that way. Since each variable has genetic links, it looks like a tie. We could test the relationship in either direction. But we can measure handedness earlier than intelligence. You could see which hand a baby uses to hold a rattle. But it takes a while to be able to measure intelligence. So it seems reasonable that if there is a causal relationship, the first one to surface is probably the cause of the next one. It's hard for causation to work backwards in time. So let's assume that after exploring the matter thoroughly, we come to the conclusion that handedness causes intelligence. Our theory in lit review has guided us to include two variables in our model, and that the direction of the hypothesized causality is that handedness causes intelligence. This statement of predicted causality is our hypothesis. We started with a theory, did a lit review, and selected two variables, and now we have a hypothesis. But before we move on, we want to make sure our hypothesis is testable, and generating operational definitions will guarantee that it is. In an operational definition, a variable is defined in terms of operations, things that can be done. Instead of theoretical statements, operational definitions specify the units of measurement. For example, a popular definition of hunger is a rumbling in your tummy. But it's difficult to know if a person, dog, rat, or giraffe is having a particular sensation. So in experiments, hunger is often operationally defined as hours of deprivation. The number of hours since their last meal is easy to observe, and it defines the variable in a way which can be clearly carried out. Anyone trying to replicate the experiment could follow a similar procedure. In addition to observing behavior or measuring the amount of time needed to complete a task, human subjects can report what they are feeling and thinking. They can answer open-ended questions, fill out rating scales, or even tell a story. With people, you can simply ask them if they are left or right-handed. So handedness can be operationally defined as the subject's response to the question, are you left or right-handed? Intelligence must also be operationally defined. The most common method is to define intelligence as a score on an intelligence test. Science prefers quantitative variables, such as counting. We would like adding up how many test items were correct or how fast a rat runs through a maze. But qualitative variables are also used. It is perfectly acceptable to use opinions and emotions as data, as long as the variables are operationally defined. Opinions, values, and emotions are often operationally defined as a rating on a five-point scale. The main value of generating operational definitions is the ease of replication. Anyone who wants to conduct their own study can tell exactly how each variable was defined. In square four, we specified the relationship between variables and operationally defined each of them, in square five, we'll pick a design.